Okay, it's 7 o'clock, we'll get started. Uh, this is a December 22nd, 2016 special meeting of the Flemington Borough Council. It's held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. The meeting is in the uh, historic courthouse. Uh, all right, let's go to the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, released shortly. 
there's a redevelopment agreement that we're working on with the redeveloper. Okay. My second question is, the redeveloper should complete an archaeological survey on the site of any demolition to identify and retain all historically significant items that's found on the site before a new construction takes place. Is that mentioned in the redevelopment agreement? Is that put in writing for Mr. Cost to consider to? We don't have a redevelopment agreement yet to respond to that. The redeveloper agreement is not done yet, so I can't comment on it. Well, philosophically, can you comment on whether you intend to make a request of Mr. Cost to, 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 to uh, follow that recommendation from your agency? Probably not on archaeological, no. Okay, so... Are you concerned about something that's been buried under those buildings for 100 years? Well, I guess I'm referring to the murals. What's the status of the murals? <laughs> Do you think that's buried under the buildings? Sir, I'm asking you... You're asking about archaeology. Well, what, then that was your agency. What are you worried about? What is it? Will, will the murals be salvaged? It's my understanding they already have been. Okay, so... Yes. Uh, Your time is up, so. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Okay, Joe and Bob.
that is that well, is not true. Yeah, we have it if it's all over Facebook, if it's Loving Poor, it's Loving to United, right. they right. trust it, somebody yeah. organized oh, it, yeah. or specific to right. understand. Well, Gallo, who tends to run some of them, he thinks it's him. It is not. Good. Okay. Now, no, we, uh, Eugene Hill and told them to give me a call, but it's not canceled because other people are organizing it. Eugene Hill is still doing it. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Okay, now there are comments. We're, we're going to do one round of comments for this time. Okay, sir? Can you have your name? I'm sorry. Daryl Pinsetta. Daryl Pinsetta? Excuse me. Address? Uh, my address is 482 Bell Blue Moss Road, at 30 New Jersey, that one's township. I own a building in 1911, I restored it, one commercial, one back address again, so I have a problem with that, some people. Uh, basically, I have no problems with the either tearing it down or leaving it up in the building, but I'm uh, concerned about the water correction, the sewer, the, uh, basically the fire department, because I don't know if they're going to have a ladder to go six stories high. And that, eight, that's the concern. Eight, 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 eight. Well, we might not have a ladder that reaches that high. Um, we might have to buy new equipment to meet that criteria. Uh, is the town picking up stuff like that? Yes. Yeah. And did you come up with any price of a fire truck ladder, which is a Quite a bit of money. Yeah, I know it's in it. I think it's come up like eight or nine times now. Okay, so the, we have um, what's referred to as a mutual aid agreement between us and other municipalities. Um, you have Raritan Township just bought an aerial platform. We have a ladder as it is now that will be able to handle that situation. So we're not concerned um, with the height of the buildings. We have the capability and we have the support from our surrounding municipalities, mutual aid support, which we'll be able to deal with that situation without having to talk to you. Yeah, without having local well, well, it's, it's a it's a mutual aid. Here or the it, building do me a favor, don't, don't talk over it. So well, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a mutual aid agreement, so it means that we support each other right. in those situations. And there's many times when there's equipment that one of us has and the other one doesn't. And rather than having to put the expense on the taxpayers to have to duplicate equipment that's not even a quarter mile apart, we just support each other. And that, that's that's what they refer to as a mutual aid agreement. So we already have that we're obviously we're dealing with water and sewer per per state requirement. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Hey, speak to Joe. See you, Joe. Sixty-one Elliot, Iron Park. Thank you, Press Board, and make a few remarks. What we're dealing with our neighbors and our family. Our plumbers and our guys that cut our grass or whatever, we have an expectation that we can deal in good faith and that people are trustworthy, say what they're going to do, what they're going to do. And that's a reasonable expectation, I think, everyone would buy into that. Do you agree with me, Mayor? Go on, Steve. Okay. Is that a yes? Please go on. When it comes to our elected officials, trustworthiness and dealing up front is something we can and should demand. You agree with that? Please go on, Steve. I have to remark that by calling this meeting, especially for the sole purpose of redesignating that us as the redeveloper, which practically precludes anyone else who may be interested in getting into this project from even thinking about it because it really looks like the fix is in. Okay? So this lack of transparency, okay, and this obvious and deliberate maneuver to take this vote before the new year, when you know very well that there will be another council member who was elected on a single platform opposed to this, is despicable. Okay? And in 
embarrassing. I told some people about this in college. What kind of backward deal is going on here? Okay, so those are my remarks. My question is, again, if you want to get a straight answer, I'm going to try it again. What is being done to enforce the maintenance ordinance on that union hotel property? I'd like to know if this board, anyone on this board has approached any professionals, roofers, construction people, and asked them what exactly would it take to at least stop the further damage. And also, Steve, my second question is, okay, when is it? Thank you. <laughs> Someone else would like to speak and that's exploding. I'll wait for an answer here. Your time. There. Okay. Okay. Uh, who else would like to speak? Um, Susan Peterson. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I've come this evening to talk about this vote that we're going to be doing. Um, the public, myself included, believed we were protected by a revised master plan, but learned there was an alternate agenda, unbeknownst to us. I have a plan that will serve to ease the tensions and divisiveness filling our community because of this. You've been working with Jack over a year, and there's no agreement. I would like the same amount of time for another search, a 12-month period with a huge, far-reaching RFP for the Union Hotel redevelopment. Why? Because it has never been done, and it shows your due diligence to the community to do it. It then becomes a just process. You have said, bring us another developer, so I want to do just that. The search cannot be left to locals, it cannot be left to whatever shows up, and you must be open to a new developer yourselves. When you already have someone, you're not. We have national recognition now, we have seasoned experts to guide us. This is a different story now. One thing I'll say about Jack, he made me realize what I need to fight for, okay? The fact that we believed in good faith that our interests were being guarded and they actually were not has been a call to action by the residents in this community. It is an opportunity for you to pause, think about it, and change your course. It must be done, otherwise this huge decision will never sit right with the public in this town. All options need to be explored properly with a focused attempt by those knowledgeable in the field. Mr. Cuss can reapply according to the RFP. He's quite busy with Burton Township. How much can one guy juggle? Let's give him a breather. To begin, as we put the hotel in the national spotlight as being available for rehabilitation, there need to be some changes. Basically, it needs to be brought back to life. I am tired of driving by and seeing a dark black hole in the center of Flemington. This would never happen in Westfield or Summit. Okay? It has not been fair that illegal banners and demolition symbols have been placed and allowed on the building in an intimidating manner. amount already owed for back taxes will be used to fix the hole in the roof to prevent further damage. The porch could be shored up, the wood taken off the windows, lights on at night on the porch, no chain link fence, get rid of the mural. It needs to be integrated back into life, into the community. There's a wonderful wide sidewalk there, there's a message board that can be used, flowers, planters. Now you don't sell a house without curtains. Okay, who else has uh, not spoken would like to speak? Um, Al Shui. Al Shui Park Avenue. First of all, I've been coming to these meetings just as much as everyone else, and I have not seen that you guys have hidden anything. When I ask you questions, you're more than happy to talk to me about it. I come up and I ask you questions on, on 
one-on-one, -on -one, no one has had a problem with that. Um, nobody has had a problem with, you know, the jack until um, you decided to, it's mostly the outside people that seem to be having this problem. Most of the people, not, not all the girls, not all the girls, but the people I speak to are not. Now, the other thing is, you're comparing us to Westfield and to um, Summit. We have a median income here of $50,000, which is just in the paper this week. And they have a median income of $120,000. You can't compare those parents. There's no way that you can prepare, and if you don't get something, you want to wait another year before anything is done, then what's going to happen is our, prop, our property is going to, the value is going to keep going down and down. As it is, it's, it's gone way down, and it's not going up. So if you want to wait another year, that's just more devastation than what we do. Thank you, Ross. Who else would like to speak? Uh, sir. Mm -hmm. Are your parents? Bay Street, inside the world. When we met last in regular session for a council, there was a discussion regarding the Gold Black Rock there. The fact that this project was in conformity with the Terminal Plan and the process by which that plan was arrived, the project was arrived at, there was considerable support for that. The board chose to defer a vote that evening, acknowledging that they would be voting on something that a new member of the board would then have to act on. So chose to defer at that time. So it's not clear for me, trying to keep an open mind, why we're not doing the same thing regarding this project. And with regards to There's a quick answer to that, and it's a matter of law. That's my question. All right, go ahead. And, and, and with regards to this project, what's the emergency that we would have this emergency session this evening? And why could it not be addressed earlier? It arose my confidence. And when I first spoke to this project three months ago, I said, I just don't want to feel it. And I can't but help to feel it. Okay, uh, there, within your three minute time slot, I'll answer a couple of those. It's a matter of law, and I said this at the last meeting, that one council cannot introduce something that has to be adopted by the next council. The Global Act has to go to council, to planning board, and back to council. That's the reason it was not introduced last time. We covered that very clearly. This is a redeveloper agreement. We thought we might be able, I, I mean, we are at a point of negotiating a redeveloper agreement. This is simply an extension. It's nothing we haven't already done twice before, which is to say that we, uh, assuming how the vote goes, I don't know, but if we pass it tonight, it'll simply be nothing more than what we've already done twice, which is to say that we support this particular plan and we want to move forward. The only reason that we're voting on this instead of another developer agreement is because we didn't finish the agreement, and so we're doing this, and this was clearly explained at the December 12th meeting that we would be doing this. Second. Okay, who else uh, would like, does anyone else have a question? Um, Ma'am? Hi, I'm Karen Fadul of Whitehouse Station, New Jersey. Um, I'm really interested in the Westfield Park Project. Um, I That is what we've been talking about. It is not ready yet, and when it is, we will make it available. It's just not ready yet. When we thought it might be, but it isn't. That's all right, that's fair. When do you think it would be ready? Are you talking about, I, I, thought, I think I understand your question, but you don't want to sound like I've done. What is it? Your question is, when are you going to be able to see a redeveloper agreement? Right, because that's what we mentioned in this chapter. Well, we'll see that. There's also a difference between the agreement and the plan. The agreement is more, more or less an agreement with the developer talking about financials, 
and um, preservation, a lot of different things like that. It has nothing to do with the actual plan, it has nothing to do with the concept, it has nothing so to do with the agreement. So the agreement is so more of just a contract to make sure that he's, he's viable, he's, he's, he knows what his expect our expectations of him are, so that, that kind of thing. That's right. an agreement. Well, I think the plan said. is the plan. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I'd be good for people to know what the agreement is consisting of and what your are going to do with that. We actually put Mr. Cust and his team again and our attorneys this past Monday we hoping to have something completed and on the website by Tuesday and the other one on the website to through it. And it's not working. We still have some negotiations that are going on, so it's not available. So part of your negotiation with them might be some of this historical background that there's a lot of things that are discussed in that as well. A lot. Okay, so, well, you know, I'm just hoping that, you know, you, you approach this with an open mind and not get taken in by someone who talks fast and has a lot of money. We are and I know that you people are smarter than that. Thank you. So, so, so just, just I'm asking you to keep in mind the intrinsic authenticity of this town. And if, it's, if that building and the others are taken down, we're going to lose that. So I'm just asking you to keep that authenticity as part of your plan. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Joanne Long. Joanne Long, Seven World and Trap. I have just two questions. My first question is further to the gentleman over at the end. They asked about the repair to the roof and the ordinance, if you're maintaining that ordinance and repairing the roof. So further damage isn't done. And then my second question is, um, a few months back, there was an architect who offered his help and he did work on the buildings on Ellis Island that he stated had trees growing through the roofs. And he offered his help, and uh, my question is, have you been in touch with him? So those are my two questions. I don't recall that architect that you're talking about. He gave is he the one that spoke at the rally? Yes. Yes, he did, and he was going to try to set up a meeting with the uh, National Historic Trust, and I have not heard from him or them since then. Well, I have his part. Yes. Well, he said that he would, and he hasn't. I told him I would speak with him. And no, we have not approached roofers about the hotel. Okay, I would personally call him and have him contact him. Thank you. Fine. Chris Engelhardt. Um, in August, um, the, uh, it was supposed to be a reality that we postponed it for three weeks in a regular meeting uh, because we didn't have a full board and we thought that everyone should be there to participate. So I'm wondering what the difference is now. Do you have a full council here tonight if, if, if it's important? August that you wait for the whole membership. Uh, why are you not waiting this time on the same subject? We were just saying Yeah, I think that, it, I don't remember the exact date, but at the end of August, we barely had a quorum here. Um, we had considered canceling the meeting. In fact, I think we only had three or four council people. And, um, so. Well, I mean, you postponed the vote. And I'm saying, you know, we don't have a full board right now. Why are you not full board? Why are you waiting until we have a full board until the end of August? If we were voting on a redeveloper agreement tonight, we would have to ask Mr. Gorman to at least call in or else wait until he was here. But extending this is relatively routine compared to that. So that's why. Chris, I'm explaining. That's just why. This is why. If it bothers you that this appears different than August, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but there's not really any answer to that question. This is now. That was August. I don't know what to say. That meeting, August. 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 That meeting in August, Chris, Brian, who's on the redevelopment committee, was on vacation. Brooke was on vacation. Uh, you know, we, we, we had a limited amount of people here. Now you know the full redevelopment committee is here, myself, Brian, and Phil, and the majority of the council, minus Mr. Roman, if we need him, we can contact him. Yeah. So we have the full council this time. Is there anyone else who has not spoken that would like to speak? Um, okay. Yes, Patricia 
now. I would like to comment on the fact that have you ever, you know, in recent time received any new plans of any kind or? Uh, excuse me, second. Where do you live, please? I live in, uh, in excuse me, very town, Third Town. Okay. okay. Very non Okay, thank you. Okay, have we received new plans? Yeah, have you received any new plans? Has he been working on any new plans? Well, the, the latest, um, <clears throat> The, uh, the August 22nd plan is the one that was presented to the public. Since then, he has done a number of what is scenarios to try to, for example, say what would it look like if you kept the whole facade of the hotel? What, what would it look like if you kept the 9100 main building? Um, he's done some of those type of what ifs, but um, we, that's, that's all. The August 22nd is the current version that um, that we're working with. When you come up with a plan that you all agree on is a good plan, would you present that to the public first? Well, it already, it already has been presented. It's the, the August 22nd plan is the one that we intend to, um, to move forward with. I have another question for you, and that is, I understand that there's some large red X's on the boards in front of the Union Hotel. <laughs> that is atrocious. You go all the work of putting the decorations up in the town and everything, and you're responsible for maintaining the look of the town and the care of its buildings for as long as they're there. And they need to be taken sure, down. Sure, I, I can answer the can down. And this actually answers Ms. Peterson's um, comments a little bit, which were fairly ill informed. Um, Part of, part of what you realize is once you, once you assume the position up here, there's a lot to learn. And so, I respect your plan and the heart that goes into it. This has also been answered your question. No, taking it's down, not. Taking down, no, I'm not answering your question. So, take down the construction fences is not an option because we have to. The building itself has some serious hazards and we have to prevent entry into the buildings. So we have to provide safety. There are bricks and exterior pieces falling off of the building. And so, we have to provide a safe zone around that building so that people aren't hit with falling a brick. The X's on the buildings themselves tell people that they, you cannot enter. The building itself is hazardous, and you can't allow occupants. So it provides it an intentional legal warning sign to people. And they were up there previously. They weren't straight painted on the boards, but they were actually printed signs that were actually screwed to the building itself. They've been there for a long time. Um, so those signs are actually required by law, so we have to have those up there. So, and, and, two on, and to your point on top of that, being able to provide electricity to a building that doesn't have you know, um, active um, fire suppression, there's a lot of issues that go along with that, and it's not as simple as just, hey, let's tear everything down, let's light it up, and let's throw flowers in front of it. That would be great. It's not realistic, and it's a different, it's a different situation. So. Time's up. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who has not spoken? Holly Rosetti, 36 minutes being out I have some real concerns about the plan that's coming on to Main Street. Um, I think demolishing our history is just an awful thought. All that Flemington has is its history. We don't have a river like uh, Lambertville. We don't have a river like Glinton. And so taking down our historic buildings <laughs> and putting up a, an eight-story building that's probably like a cookie-cutter building in the middle of our town is not going to move us forward. And I think I also have a concern <clears throat> that our um, Flemington cut glass was demolished and it sits vacant. So could that happen to us on Main Street? It probably could. And then I look at Agway and I think, okay, I looked at it and said, oh, this sounds good. It's going to be to the same scale and style of our historic Main Street. Well, we're going to demolish that. So is Agway going to look like our eight-story building? I, I was here for the meetings where we did our master plan. It was a great plan. We loved it. What happened? Why did we abort a plan that we spent a lot of money for, we spent a lot of time, it was a positive event. I can remember all of us being here looking at the plan and saying, okay, 
We're going to do it. Now, <laughs> we have to find a team because we have a redeveloper who has some money. That's a good thing. But he's not following the plan. So I'm asking you as a council to consider that, that we have a plan. You don't abort plans that you put time and money and energy into. I also think that we never passed a wide net for redevelopers. We waited for somebody to come and say, here's some money, I got a plan. Half a minute. Okay. And I also want you to really consider what Mr. Huss qualifications are to do this kind of play. His baseball fields are pole barns, his wild buffalo wings is a franchise and a cookie cutter. Does he have the qualifications to do a main street? Thank you. numerous attempts to get that hotel going again. Who else has not spoken? Marcia? Hi, Marcia Parra. In taxes, you want to know what happened to I wasn't going to speak tonight, Mayor, but I just want to comment on what you just said. Um, there was a wide net passed in 2008 with a smaller version, and it failed. And there was a wide net passed in 2011 with the same small version, and it failed. This bigger version, this redo of the master plan, has endeavored on, on a search. There was an article written in TAP in the fall of 2014 where you were quoted as saying, since Jack has bought the liquor license, we're going to work with him. There was never a search. Never. Now you're right. There was not a search on this whole block. Right. right. And Mr. Spindle no, is shaking his head every time somebody says, cast the net, let's go out for a search. And you're saying, we did that. Well, we didn't do that. You didn't do that. And you only you're right. Mr. But it's also a perfectly legitimate approach to work with the development of the Okay, I don't see any. All right, we'll move on then. Thank you for your comments. Next is resolution number 203, extending the designation of uh, John Cuss Jr. as redeveloper for expanded hotel redevelopment area and authorize the redevelopment committee to continue negotiation of an agreement and the extension would be until April 10th, which is a council meeting date, so it's roughly three months. Is there a motion on this? Second. All right, we've been seconded. Is there any council discussion before we vote on it? Just that we put a lot of time and energy, and so is Mr. Costa, into this plan. Um, we've spent countless days and hours working on redevelopment agreements, working on a lot of things. This is, um, we were really hopeful we were going to get to an agreement, but we're not quite there yet. We hope we'll be there soon. And um, that's just the first step amongst many we have to get through to, to make a project happen. And, um, and I think that this is the right direction for us to be moving in. Starting from scratch would guarantee us many more years before we even get back to this point again. So I think that um, this is the right move and then the right decision to make it uh, and make this home. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, call the roll, please, Sally. Okay, next on the agenda is adjournment. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. You know, uh, the official meeting is over, and no one, of course, needs to stay. We don't need to stay in any event. But, um, one thing I would kind of caution you about a little bit, and I know how you're going to take this, but, but still, some of the things that are said tonight are so assumed and, and frankly off the mark, and things, some, are, some are better, but some are so off the mark it's astounding, and yet when they circulate within the same group or you all feel the same way, you all just clap. And you all just accept it no matter what is said. And it, it's astounding up here to hear some of the assumptions about things like why we're having this meeting. It's truly astounding to hear some of this. 
Since I'm bringing it up, if you want to talk, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to stay up, and I'll, I'll stay around and talk since I'm bringing it up. I'm not paying my public service. Yes, I'm not.